to be honest, I think anyone who's a fan of these movies has probably read the books and I don't think that there's anything in them that they would be surprised by. After We Fell starts with Tessa being offered an internship at Vance Publishing in Seattle and that's looking like it's going to cause some strain on the relationship being long distance. But I don't have anything there. You'd have me. Okay, that's not enough. If I'm not enough, that's your problem, but you're not going to stop me. And also her dad, who she hasn't seen in about 10 years, has just come back into her life. So there's a lot of family issues going on, relationship issues, uh, school, work, adult career issues. That's where we pick up. Yeah, the next one we, we pick off of a, a, another cliffhanger and I feel like we're continuing to explore the journey of Harden and Tester and then trying to make it work. But, you know, kind of later in life and further down the line and the nature of those obstacles is obviously going to change as you grow up. I think that Tess has changed a lot from film to film. I think in this film she's starting to shut down a little. Uh, I think she entered the first one very idealistic and hopeful and then so much has happened between them in, in this relationship and, and because of this relationship and just with her family life that I think she's growing up and that age of innocence is ending a little bit and she's starting to kind of confront the adult world. They're trying, bless them, they're trying, but they're just, they're, they're not quite getting there yet, are they? But um, that's that's what's so interesting to watch. And I feel like what, what Castile did really well is identify that shift in them and, and then thematically throughout the movie, make it a bit more a bit more mature. I think long distance is probably one of the biggest uh, issues that Tessa and Harden have to face in this film because of her being in Seattle and, and him not being happy with that but also her dad coming back into her life i think that han's very uh cautious and he's very protective of tessa and i think that's kind of an issue because she wants him to accept her father in the same way that she is i think that the thing about i guess like being in a relationship as you get older and that thing both each party wanting to have like a career and things that they want to do for themselves to feel fulfilled and, and you know reach their goals and do what they want to do it's very difficult and rare for both parties to want to be in the same place to pursue those dreams and kind of end up supporting each other so naturally that kind of leads to long distance as joe said so yeah long distance as a result of kind of wanting to balance being with the person you love with following the dreams and pursuing the dreams that you love and doing what you love so it's a tough balance. I think after that also jealousy, obviously, which isn't a new issue for them, but um, with Robert's character, I think that he, he acts as a catalyst. The underlying trust issues that she has with him and that they have with each other because of the bet in the first movie, I don't think that that's ever really gone away for Tessa. And there's this um, fight scene in Ken's cabin where that kind of, that comes out. You're my better place, Tess. Why I was excited to return is because I really wanted to finish this story. I think it would have been disappointing if we didn't get to and if we just ended it with the second movie. And so I was just really happy that we got to finish their journey because I think the fans, we owe it to them and they deserve that. And also just to give some closure. Two movies back to back in a pandemic is a bit more challenging than doing one back in the, in the real world. So. It came with its challenges, but no, super excited and happy and grateful we could do it. And looking back, three and four are, are, are kind of my favourites. We're proud in the end and happy.